Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. It's my favorite video to make and it's also my favorite season. So we're going to be talking about some books I want to read this fall and also some recommendations I have for fall reads in case you're looking for some books to read this fall. I currently have a tea with me because I think it must be the changing of the seasons but my throat, I keep having to clear it and I just... <laughs> It's been annoying me all day. So I have a tea here and also water. So I hope you have something to drink, a beverage, take a little break to drink some water, hydrate, because I'm really bad at that. That feels really nice on my throat. We're actually going to start with some of the books that I want to get to this fall. And then the like second half of the video will be some books that I personally recommend you read if you're looking for some fall recommendations. I don't I don't know. I was like putting this list together and it was kind of a little bit chaotic, a little bit all over the place. My TBR, I feel like I was pretty set in what I wanted to read, but for the recommendations, I feel like I just haven't read as many books this year. I've been through like so many slumps, so it was harder for me to find like some newer books that maybe I haven't talked too much about. Some of these I've definitely talked about, so apologies for that. But hopefully some of these are books that maybe you haven't heard of, or maybe they're books that you have been curious about and just haven't gotten around to them. That's my little disclaimer. This video might be all over the place. I took notes for some books, didn't take notes for other books. I feel like I mainly just want to get on here and chat. So I have some notes so that I don't forget certain things, but I also just want to chit chat a little bit and talk about these books from what I remember, which might not be a lot. A lot of these books I don't know the synopsis for. I'm one of those people that really loves to just like go into a book knowing like the bare minimum. I feel like I just want to like be on the journey and that leads me to not really know or at least not really remember what a lot of these books are about because I also have like a horrible memory. So if I see someone talk about something and it piques my interest, I just add it to my TBR and then months later or whenever I get the book, I'm excited for it, but I can't remember why. So just a little disclaimer on that as well. I might not be able to give you like the most accurate synopsis. Okay, so let's just dive right in. I'm going to start with the very, yeah, I'm not going to do any categories. I'm just going to start from the order I see them in the pile but the very first one and I feel like the most appropriate one for this season I guess just because the title is Autumn by Ali Smith and this is a book that I've had on a TBR for a while I haven't read any Ali Smith I'm curious about her writing I don't know I just like don't know what to expect from her this is part of her seasonal quartet books. I think there's, four. yeah, no, there's four. There's four seasons. Um, so this is part of her seasonal quartet, and I honestly don't even know if Autumn is the first one you're supposed to start with. I believe it is, but if not, I don't know. I don't know that it really matters from what I've seen. I think you can just kind of start them. I don't know that they're like connected. No clue what this one's about. So that's, <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say, but it is one that I've been wanting to read for a while. And for some reason I had my heart and my mind set on starting with autumn and then making my way through like winter, spring and summer. So that's the first book that I have on my list. The second book that I have on my list is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is one that I've put off reading for a very long time because I actually watched the series on Netflix and that like definitely <laughs> scared me but it was so good it was so well done and then last year I started with a Shirley Jackson but it wasn't this one because I just am too scared of it I read we have always lived in the castle last year and I really really loved that one and I figured this year maybe is finally the time that I will get to the haunting of Hill House but I have like this thing where I get very scared by like ghosts any, like any movie show that has ghosts or like a haunted house like that stuff freaks me out and then I can't like sleep well for days so I'm a little bit nervous about it but I'm excited to finally get to it and I'm curious to see like the differences between the adaptation and the book so that's the second book that I have on my TBR and the third book that I have is Curse Bunny by Bora Chung this is a collection of short stories so this, oh, I also forgot that this was translated. I'm so excited for this. I feel like I've only ever seen like really great reviews on this. And I've also, if I'm not mistaken, I remember a lot of people who have said like they don't really 
love short stories or they don't always gravitate towards them. I feel like I remember them saying that they've really, really enjoyed this collection. So I am one of those people that can fall in that like, not sure if I really love short stories or not. So I'm excited to give this a try and see how it goes. I know nothing about it. I don't know if it's like horror or if it's just like eerie, creepy stories, but I am very, very excited to get to this. I've had this on my shelves for such a long time. I think like a year or two at this point. So excited to finally get to this one. We'll see how it goes. Okay, up next is a book that was in, oh, I just like gave you a sneak peek. <laughs> was a book that was in one of my book haul videos and it's Chouette, I believe, by Claire Oshetsky. I talked a little bit about this in my book haul video, but I have a thing with owls. Like they very much so creep me out. So I was always like kind of avoiding this one and I just didn't really want to read it. I mainly got interested in it because I saw that she had a new book that was coming out, Poor Deer, I believe. And so it kind of piqued my interest and I was like, hmm, maybe I should just give this a try. And I saw it as like a used copy. So I figured I would get it. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the synopsis is about a woman who has a daughter and she believes that her daughter is becoming like a little baby owl or is a baby owl something along those lines. Her husband doesn't understand like what's going on or why she's saying that, doesn't believe her. And she kind of like makes sure to protect the baby owl or the baby, <laughs> whatever. It sounds like so bizarre, but I'm very intrigued by it. Something about the synopsis when I read it, it made it feel so like tender and like sweet like this mother protecting her child and I think it'll be really really heartwarming but also really really weird so I'm adding it to my list okay and then up next is one that's been on my TBR for such a long time and it's Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell this has to do with Shakespeare's family we focus not on Shakespeare but we focus on his son Hamnet and his wife what's her name Agnes. Her name is Agnes. So we focus on those two characters. I just remember there was like a point where I was seeing this book everywhere all the time. Something about it feels like I should be reading it in the fall. I don't really know. I don't know what happens in this like story. I'm also not like super familiar with Shakespeare's work. It, at school we definitely covered Shakespeare but when I was in school I feel like a lot of things just went over my head to be honest, but I think we maybe read like one or two of his plays and yeah, very, very curious to see what this is about. Also just curious about Maggie O'Farrell's writing. I've heard that her memoir is really, really good too. So I've been wanting to pick that one up, but I figured I wanted to start with Hamnet. So this one's been on my shelves for like two years for sure. And I need to just get to it. The last and final book that I have for my TBR is Mama Day by Gloria Naylor. I have two books by Gloria Naylor, uh, The Woman of Brewster Place and this one. And I remember adding this to my TBR because I feel like I saw like a few reviews on bookstagram and I don't remember what it's about but it's supposed to be like fantasy magical realism and I feel like the fall is a perfect time for a book like that I wanted to add this one especially because it has been on my list for a while and I've just been putting it off I've heard great things about her writing and I'm so excited to dive in I was looking on Storygraph actually and it says in the description that it's a fascinating novel that reworks elements of Shakespeare's The Tempest so it's funny that like right before this I talked about Hamnet and then the description mentions The Tempest which I'm not sure I have no idea what that's about so I think that this will be a really really good read for the fall and I'm just so excited to give Gloria Naylor a try and see what her writing is like. Last and final book we have made it through my TBR. These are all the books minus one the Shirley Jackson book. I don't have that one. I'll probably get it from the library. But these are the books that I'm hoping to read. I like to keep my TBR relatively short because I'm majorly a mood reader, but I love making lists. And I also think that it's nice to have a list. So it's something a little less overwhelming. Like I don't have to look at all the books on my shelves. I can just look at this stack and see like, what am I feeling out of this stack? And my TBR that I made this past summer actually worked out really, really well because I read a majority of the books on my list. So that worked out. I'm hoping the same will happen for fall. 
we will see. Now we're going to move on to the recommendations, which, oh my God, look at, I have the, this many. Some of these, I might not fully remember everything. Ooh, almost dropped them all. And two of them I added last minute, so we're going to wing it. And I really might not remember a lot of what happens in them. Like I said, I feel like this year I just haven't read that many books, so... This list was really hard for me to put together and normally I feel like the fall is an easier time of year for me to pick books, but mm -mm, wasn't the case this time. Up first, I wanted to recommend a book that I don't currently own. It's Babel by R.F. Kuang and I very recently read this book. I think I finished it in August and I mean this is like such a perfect read for the fall time because it's dark academia, they're going back to school. It's a bigger book and I feel like with bigger books, nothing sounds nicer to me than like lighting a candle, having a like warm beverage and like really like sinking into a world. And this book was so captivating for me. It's one that I was like so intimidated by just because I didn't know if I'd like the dark academia aspects. And because it is fantasy, I just figured a lot of the like magical elements would just go over my head, which it did. It 100% did. Like I can't fully explain like the magic system. Like I kind of understand it, but while I was reading it, I kind of just like let it wash over me and <laughs> didn't focus on like making sure I understood it. But in this story, we, it starts off in like eight, in the 1800s and we're following our main character Robin who has been taken away from Canton because there was like a cholera outbreak and he is taken by this man called Professor Lovell and now he is staying with him in London and Professor Lovell is getting him trained up on like Latin, ancient Greek, and Chinese. For a long time Robin is just like constantly in classes learning languages so that he can go to the Royal Institute of Translation and that's at Oxford. So like that is the main goal for him to get in there and become a student there, which for him, he's like so excited to have that opportunity. But as he spends more time there, he learns a little bit more about like the magic system, which it's like these silver bars and you have to like put a word a specific word that translates into like meanings the, like the same meanings but like two different languages something like that he's learning a little bit more about silver and like who gets silver and who is affected and who it profits off of we get to see him like go through that process he makes friends there it talks a lot about class colonialism language translation i was fully sucked into this one the audio narration is excellent so if you're an audiobook listener highly recommend it on audio rf kuang's writing just like immediately pulls me in and i'm hooked i only read this book. I could not focus on reading other books. I was buddy reading it with Taz and Seiki and I totally just like flew <laughs> past them because I did not, I could not put this book down. Honestly, it was probably one of the biggest surprises for me this year because I wanted to read it, but I was like, I don't know that I'll love it. And I ended up loving it way more. Okay, the next book that I would recommend, and I feel like I've definitely talked about this book. It is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Duji. Let's see, how do you pronounce this? Dushi. Tsujimura. 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 I think I didn't get that right still. So. But the next book is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Dushi. I swear I will look it up and then pronounce it and then my brain like drops it from memory. Mizuki Tsujimura. I think I think I got that. But this is a book that I absolutely loved. I think it was in one of my favorite videos. I think it it's definitely a favorite. I just don't remember if I talked about it on this channel. But this book is absolutely perfect for fall. I feel like it's got like those magical elements. It's about seven students who wake up one day and the mirror in their bedroom is just shining. And if you tap on it or if you touch it, then you are transported to this like magical, beautiful castle where you get to hang out with the other people that are allowed into the castle. And you just like hang out and get to know these other kids that are there. And you don't really know why you're there or how you all got to be there. 
but you're just there. It's one that I wish I could like reset my brain on just so I can like re-experience this again. It crushed my soul, but it was really, really sweet and beautiful as well. And I just like loved the friendship between the seven students. I highly recommend this for the fall. I feel like it takes place during the school year. Yeah, there's just like these magical elements. It definitely gives like Studio Ghibli vibes and it was actually created into a movie. Don't really remember my thoughts on the movie. I think they made some changes that are like expected whenever things get adapted, but I don't think I really loved those changes. But this book, I actually reread it last fall and I'll probably reread it again this fall because there's just like something about it. Even though I know what happens, I just, I really, really love those books. So I highly recommend this one. Another book that I recommend that I don't have the copy for is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I read this one last year and like I said earlier, it was my first Shirley Jackson. So I hadn't read any of her books before and I really, 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 like enjoyed the vibe of it. I don't fully remember like everything that happened. For some reason it made me think of like Coraline and not because of the plot at all. It just, I don't know, something about it gave me the same feeling. We have our main narrator, Mary Catherine, who we're following but she's also called Mary Cat and her sister Constance as well as like Uncle Julian. He's part of the family. They live in a castle that's very secluded from like the rest of the town and there's an event that takes place where a lot of the members of the Blackwood family so Mary Cat and Constance's family that die no one exactly knows what happened or how it happened well they do know how it happened but they don't know like who did it basically like the rest of the town is like so freaked out by this family and are kind of like the worst to them and we just follow Mary Catherine who feels very young but she's not. I think she's supposed to be like 16 or 18 or something, but she feels like so much younger than that. You just kind of follow her along. She's a little bit of a weirdo, and I don't know. I really, really enjoyed this book. The vibes for it are perfect for like spooky time. It's not super scary. I was not scared during this. It just felt really like comforting and creepy in like a weird way. I really really enjoyed this. I highly recommend this one. The next book that I want to talk about is a book that I feel like I've talked quite a bit about but I feel like this is the time of year to read it and it's Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I went into this last year at some point. I don't really remember when and I thought I would hate it and it became like one of my favorite books ever. It is such a good book. I get so excited when I see people reading it and when they end up loving it, it makes me so happy. For this one, I can't, or I will give you like a little bit of a synopsis. We are following Piranesi and he like lives in this labyrinth and we only know as much as he knows and we are just kind of along for the ride. It starts off really, really weird and like nothing makes sense. I remember the very first page being like, what is being said to me? I don't understand. You kind of just have to like power through a little bit because I promise it is absolutely worth it. The writing is so good. Piranesi as a character, I loved. And just finding out like what happened and how Piranesi got to be where he was, it's, it's quite a ride. And I think that this time of year would just be so perfect for it. Just please, if you haven't read it or if you've been intimidated by it, give it a try. Get through like the, I don't even remember at what point it started making sense for me, but just like keep powering through. I swear, I promise it is worth it. I highly recommend this one. It was just so good and that is just all I'll say about it because I don't wanna give anything else away. Okay, and then the next book that I have to recommend, I don't have the physical copy, but it's Claire and the Sun by Kasio Ishiguro. And I'm not gonna lie, this one I don't know if it fits in this fall recommendations video but I think it's because it's like a sci-fi book and it has like this artificial friend element to it. It's making me want to say fall but I also think that this could have been a great like summer read or maybe it'll be like a good transitional read even though by the time you see this video it's officially gonna be fall so <laughs> transitions kind of done. In this book we are basically following Clara who's an artificial friend and she gets chosen by this child named Josie. Josie has some like chronic illness. I don't know that it's ever like explained what it is, but Clara is 
there to be by her side always and we just see like their relationship form and just being in the perspective of the AI robot because you're in Clara's perspective I just really enjoyed because you're like in her brain <laughs> like as she's figuring out what certain things are and how certain things work and she doesn't always understand and she's like very observant of like relationships and like seeing Josie with her mother and trying to understand them a little bit something about this book has always really stuck with me after I finished it I think it could be a good fall read I really think it could be because it's sci-fi that's, that's my whole reasoning okay the next book that I will talk about is I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman and this book is just so bleak and it's dystopian and I think that it would just be a great time to read fall or winter I think that this could work I think I read it in like January and it definitely worked for like the bleak gray weather and if I didn't read it then I have no idea when I read it but I'm pretty sure I did. This one is another book that I won't give too much information on because I think it's just best to kind of go along for the ride. What I will say is that we are following this group of 20 women who are being held underground in this bunker and they are captive. They don't know why they're being held there or how they got there. They just like I'm pretty sure they just like woke up and they were like in this bunker. There is one character and she's our main narrator who is the youngest of the group they weren't really sure like if it was a mistake that she was brought in or why one day the women are let out of the cages and we just kind of follow along from there there are no chapter breaks which normally when I get a book that has no chapter breaks I feel like I kind of move through it slowly because something about short chapters I just want to keep going I'm like let me just get to the next chapter but with this one there are no chapters so I was a little intimidated by that but I couldn't put this down I kept wanting to pick it up and see like what was going to happen next so highly recommend this one it's definitely one of my favorites of this year and I think it could be perfect for the fall. The next book that I want to talk about and I don't have is Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huan. I also read that in the beginning of the year I believe. It was so good. It's I think it falls under like the horror category but it wasn't too scary. I wasn't really scared at all. It was just kind of like creepy and gross and there was some parts that definitely were disgusting but we are following our main narrator I don't remember if we know her name, but she is like such a talented pianist and she learned from her parents and she's in this program to just get better and learn and there's an accident that happens and it just changes the course of her life and she is no longer in this program and is then needing to find a job. So that's when she comes across this company who's hiring called Holistic. They're very well known. They have a lot of like beauty products and supplements and like beauty procedures and she starts working there. Things start to get really really weird so that's all I'll say about it but I really loved this one. I think that it would absolutely be perfect for fall. And this is another one that I could not put down once I picked up. I just kept wanting to read and see what happened. I also loved our main narrator. I loved her relationship with her parents and like seeing their dynamic and also just like reading the weird stuff that was going on at this company. Like it just kept getting weirder and weirder and it just like felt so uncomfortable and icky. So very much so recommend that one. I think it's perfect for this time of year. Okay, the next two books, they're part of a duology, and I'm sure it's no surprise to anyone that I'm recommending this, but it's A Psalm for the Wild Bill and A Prayer for the Crown Shy. They're The Monk and the Robot Duology by Becky Chambers. This is just like peak coziness, and I don't know, it's very, very short. I feel like you could read these two back to back pretty quickly. It has a lot of reminders in it that I often forget and sometimes you need those reminders. So this book was so sweet. I really, really loved it. Oh, you see a jibby. And now you don't see a jibby. She's gone. So in this world, there were robots that once used to work in these factories and then they become sentient and are like, hey, we actually don't want to keep doing this and we want to go to the woods. And the humans are kind of like, uh, sure, okay, that's fine. And they go off and the robots now just live in the wild and no one ever really sees them. Because of this, a lot of the humans became really freaked out about that and no longer really use technology. Capitalism is now dead. They have like a bartering system where you kind of just like help each other. And I don't really remember how the bartering system works. It's just like this really, really sweet world. There's this tea monk that we're following and they eventually stumble across a robot named Dex. I 
I'm so bad. I don't remember their names. Okay, doesn't really tell me here either. But yeah, so we see this monk and this robot meet up and they go to different towns within this world. The robot is mainly trying to figure out like what do humans need to be happy? Because that's a question that the robots have and they sent this robot on a task to figure out like what it is that they need. They need something cozy and comforting and warm this is the one. Okay, and then the next book and final book, it was like a very last minute edition, but I feel like I want to include it. I recommend this very hesitantly because it is such a weird book and there's parts of this that I don't really remember. I think I must have like blacked it out because this is a weird little book, but it is <laughs> Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. I feel like people must know by now, like it's a very cute cover, but it's so freaking weird. And we basically follow our narrator and she's never really fit in. And she's always felt like she wasn't from this world. She's from a different planet. And it just gets so weird. Like there's so many weird things that happen, but I really, really enjoyed this book. If you're wanting something super freaking weird, I think you should read Earthlings. But those are all the books that I have to talk about. I feel like I've chatted for such a long time. Definitely didn't help my throat, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some recs and I hope that it was just like fun seeing what books I wanted to put on my TBR. If there's any books from my TBR that you've read, please let me know. If there's any that I should like prioritize, get to sooner, any books that you really, really loved, let me know. I'm so excited for the fall. I went through like such a bad reading slump this summer. I think it was like July and June. I didn't read like any books. I think I might have read like one in both months combined. So I'm just excited because August I've been reading a lot more and September I have been too. So I'm hoping that I can like keep that going in October. That is it. That's all. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're reading something good and I will see you in my next video. Bye.